Well, it's February. It's the month of St. Valentine. Cupid, drop back your bow and let your arrow go straight to my lover's heart for me, for me. Little Sam Cook. Cupid, please hear my cry and let your arrow fly high straight to my lover's heart for me. It's a little fly with him. What's that? An arrow from the heart? Yeah, it's a figure of speech by you. Who's, who sings a ballad? that involves a figure of speech involving a sharp flying projectile into the fleshy heart muscle. I mean, that's all I'm saying. What is wrong with you today? Ouch. <laughs> Uh, welcome back to another episode of Baldy and Red. I am Red. And I am Baldy. Today we are going to talk about conference registration deadlines and answering the question, what the heck is tallow? That's right. So regarding registration for the conference, there is a short tutorial on South Dakota's host's YouTube channel, which you should have viewed already. In fact, if you haven't subscribed, please do, as we host a lot of the HOSA content right here. That's some solid advice. And in regard to registration deadlines, if you have a HOSA member who is in an event with an online testing component, registration closes on February 4, so that is this Friday. So how will members who don't have an online testing component involved? Good question. So any other event has a registration deadline of March 6. I would advise just getting all students registered by the February 4 date so you don't miss anyone. And questions we always have is about this tallow stuff. So tallow is a short for talent locator. It's a way of uh, students can build an online resume and is super slick. National HOSA and Tallow became partners about five years ago now, and it's been a really great benefit to the HOSA members. That's correct, that's exactly right. It's quite simple. Students or even advisors create a Tallow profile, very similar to other platforms like Facebook, etc. The student is able to build out his or her profile. Tallow has scholarship opportunities, job opportunities, networking opportunities that go unmatched anywhere else. Great! A Tallow profile is also required to upload certain HOSA competitive event projects too as well. Some of the projects are required for the state conference but also for the international conference and it's easy to do. Also if you have students interested in South Dakota HOSA scholarships or somebody that wants to run for a state officer position those applications are located on Tallow. Again, it's super easy to find these opportunities and apply. Uh, here's the website that'll be scrolling here. It's tallow.com backslash HOSA. All right. And deadlines for the state officer application and scholarship applications are March 6. Uh, more information for these opportunities can be found under the student tab on South Dakota's HOSA's website. That is correct. Everything is laid out for those opportunities there. What else we got today? So just a reminder that someone in your HOSA organization or school should be registered as a proctor for the online portion of competitions. If you've registered for that in the past, you won't have to do it again. However, if you are new to HOSA this year, you just go to the same CMS you did to affiliate or register for conferences and you can sign up as a proctor. And the proctor will eventually get all their local HOSA students login credentials and other instructions via an email. But they must be registered as a proctor in order to get that. If you have questions, please reach out to us. Well, you know what that sound means. Yep, that's time for the HOSA fun fact of the day. So since it's February, I thought we would tie this fun fact to hearts. You are a fan of those 
hearts, those candy hearts. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I had a, uh, <laughs> my favorite ones were the pink and the white one, but once I got a banana yellow, I give that to the dogs. Yes, that's out the door. That's out the yeah. door. I'm a big purple fan. Oh, I, I like, like that, that too. I like that too. Sweethearts, as they are called, can trace their origins back to the 1860s, where they started as a familiar throat lozenge. A guy by the name of Oliver Chase streamlined this process, and in 1866, his brother Daniel started printing messages on the candy. And although at first it was just an arduous act, people fell in love with them. Printing them on hearts, they became a Valentine's Day staple, and they're, they're still around today. That's impressive. Well, till next time, peeps. Baldy, over. And Red, I'm out. When I was yeah. growing up, we had these, you like made these simple boxes and we just used, I had friends with cereal boxes and shoe boxes were probably the most common. Yeah. You remember those? Yes. <laughs> and now I get these projects. My dad, can you build me this Valentine's Day box? I mean, I got to go to Menards and <laughs> spend a hundred dollars to build this, to build this thing out. Yeah, I mean, it's got fur and what? wood and screws and yeah, whatever happened to the Kleenex box. Right? Just simple A. <laughs> there you go, dump it in there. Thanks for the sweetheart, baby. Appreciate it. Yes. Okay, so when we we would just we would bring just Valentine's for the people we like. Yeah. <laughs> Did you do that too? Yeah. Now it's now we got yeah. young kids and everybody yeah. gets a Valentine. Everybody gets a Valentine. <laughs> My box was always empty. Yeah. <laughs>